In a globalized world, borders are becoming less apparent. This is as true for consumer products as it is for human individuals. As immigration levels rise and foreign populations settle in new countries, understanding how and why individuals react to this phenomenon is increasingly important in shaping policy. For this reason, I will explore the relation between attitudes towards immigration in both employment status and education level. The dependent variable is attitudes towards immigration, with support for an increase, decrease, or no change in immigration levels as in indicators of such attitudes. Previous research has suggested economic status and labor market forces greatly influence attitudes towards immigration. Here I examine if these attitudes become increasingly negative as concern for employment increases. As immigrants tend to accept lower wages, they offer a cheaper alternative to employers and therefore have a competitive advantage over native populations. Individuals that are out of work tend to perceive immigrants as potential competitors for this reason, and their attitude towards immigration is expected to be more negative than their working counterparts. My second independent variable is level of education. High levels of education are thought to lead to more pos positive perceptions of immigration. Scholars have suggested that higher education is associated with higher racial and ethnic tolerance, and therefore more positive attitudes towards immigration. In this first cross-tabulation, I examine the impact of concern for employment on attitudes towards immigration. To measure concern for employment, I have used employment status and divided the responses into three categories, high, medium, and low concern for employment. Respondents with the, whose employment status was either unemployed, temporarily laid off, or student were placed in the high concern for employment group. I expect these individuals to have the most negative perceptions towards immigration, as they are the most likely to be in direct competition with immigrants to obtain jobs. Individuals that were employed were classified as medium concern, while retirees, homemakers, and permanently disabled individuals who are not concerned with finding employment are classified as low concern. The, in the hypothesis that higher concern for employment leads to more negative perceptions of immigration is not supported by the data. The second cross-tabulation examines the effects of education levels on ad attitudes towards immigration. Here, the variable is rather straightforward, and the labels are simply based on the highest level of education each individual has completed. Once again, as in the previous cross-tabulation, my hypothesis was not confirmed by the data and higher levels of education do not seem to correspond to more positive attitudes towards immigration. While none of my hypotheses were confirmed, these results do have important consequences for this area of study. The fact that levels of education and concern for employment do not influence attitudes towards immigration has real-world consequences in matters of policy. These findings also go against the rationale I discussed earlier. Yet, a more complete analysis of concern for employment is probably necessary. The high concern group was partly composed of students and unemployed individuals whose average age is most likely lower than that of the low concern group, composed in part of retirees. Age is generally assumed to influence racial and religious tolerance and might be another possible explanation for the results in this first cross-tabulation. With regards to levels of education, while the Tau C figure indicates a very weak or even the absence of correlation with perceptions of immigration, a horizontal analysis of the percentages from column to column does seem to point towards a slight trend, with higher education tending to match more closely with positive perceptions of immigration compared to individuals with low education. Therefore, further research is necessary to clearly support or deny the hypothesis. To conclude my findings, I do not support my to conclude, my findings do not support my hypotheses. While further research is necessary, my initial results seem to contradict some general assumptions that have been quite prevalent in, li in the literature for some time. With regards to immigration policy, these findings have serious implications. Further research could focus on refining the indicators such as concern for employment, which could combine multiple variables to create a better indicator of concern for employment.